Hey guys, my name is Ethan, this is Cobra, and welcome to the series where I teach you how to code in Python. Today, we are talking about file I.O. or file input output for people that haven't ha heard that terminology before. Uh, so this is reading in from files and reading out, or, or sorry, writing out to. So essentially, we're going to be reading and writing files. We're just going to be working with TXTs, uh, just so we cover the basics, but you're not actually limited to file extension. It doesn't have to be a TXT, it can literally be anything. It doesn't even have to have a file extension at all. But for the basis of simplicity, um, we are just using TXTs. So Python has a built-in function to help us with this, and it is open. So this open opens a file, either opens it in a read mode, a write mode, a read-write mode that can do both. There are loads of modes, I will talk about those. So we are going to create um, a file here, and we're going to say that is equal to us opening uh, readin.txt. Now we have this txt here called readin. Uh, I created a separate folder just for this, so it's a little bit cleaner. Um, and we're going to open it in read mode, so we just need it in R. You can pass that as a keyword argument as well. Um, that's typically not done though. Uh, so you have the read mode, as I said, you have the write mode, as I said. Uh, I think you have write plus, which is uh, read and write. You may have R plus as well. There's so many types that I don't remember them all, but you do have A, um, or it might be A plus, I don't know, which is like append. So it's, it's write and then it appends to the file. Um, I'll probably show that up. I'll, I'll probably uh, look that up just to make absolutely sure. But for now, we're just going to do a uh, read mode. And we're going to set our encoding equals UTF-8. Now, if you're on Linux, you don't need to do this because uh, the encoding is UTF-8 by default. However, on Windows, I believe it's ASCII by default. And while ASCII is, is perfectly fine, uh, if you do have uh, a character that is part of UTF-8 that isn't part of ASCII in your file, it will just throw up an error. There are no downsides to using encoding equals UTF-8, so you might as well just use it every time. That's pretty much what I do. Um, so there are a number of things we could do with this file while it's open. So we can literally just print uh, file.read, and that will just straight up read the file and print it out to our terminal. But before we actually run this, we need to do file.close. Now this closes the connection to the file, so other programs can use it. And if we run this, you go, hello, if you're reading this, Carver successfully read in this file. So as you can see, uh, if I open the TXT here, that is what it's in there, and it's read out the same thing. Um, so if I, however, if I put this as a new line, and then we go back and we do the same thing again, uh, it will just read the file straight in, but it will read it as a string. Uh, so so while there is, uh, so while it looks as though uh, the data is two lines. It's just reading in raw, which means that there is actually a, um, a a backslash n character. And I can actually demonstrate this by doing um, replace uh, backslash n. And that, whoops, that's the wrong button. There we go. So now that we've removed this backslash n character, which tells the computer to go to a new line, we have this here. So really, this is uh, kind of what the computer sees. It just sees a backslash n in there as well. Um, so the file.read is fine in a lot of instances. However, there are a lot of times where you'll want to read in each individual line and then be able to iterate through them. And you could do file.read split by this, um, and it would give you a list, which is the two separate lines. However, this isn't really ideal. There are uh, better ways to do this, specifically um, read lines. If I can actually get the thing working properly, there we go. Um, so as you can see here, we, it now automatically puts us, uh, uh, it now automatically puts it, uh, puts it, if I can talk, into a list for us. However, we do, uh, we do still have this backslash n. Um, so we could do dot strip um, that as well, and then I think no, that's it, that's not it. It's it's list comprehension stuff. Um, so this isn't necessarily ideal either. If anything, the other method was actually a bit better. But there is an even better way that we can iterate through our our lines. So this is kind of good if you want to count the number of lines. Um, but, normal, uh, but normally you want each line in the list to iterate through it. So in that case, you could just do for line in file, print line. And what it will do, uh, you'll still need to do print line.strip um, 
backslash in. Uh, but what it will do is it will actually iterate through the file itself. Um, and then you get, uh, you can print out different lines on their own. So that is the basics of uh, file reading. Um, <clears throat> however, there is of course file writing to do. So what we can do is do string equals, um, if you're seeing this, uh, Cabra wrote a file, can't be asked to write all of it. <laughs> um, this will do for now. So we could do file two equals open uh, write out .txt, and this time we're gonna open it in a uh, write mode. And we're gonna set the encoding again to be UTF-8. And then before we forget, we're gonna do file two dot close. And then we're gonna do stuff in the middle. So uh, the easiest way to write to a file is simply to do file to dot write uh, string. And if we run this, we'll get this right out to the TXT. And we'll see if you're seeing this carbon writer file, fantastic. Uh, to do multiple lines, uh, you can do uh, this as well. Uh, this is a new line. And it will very much do the same thing. Uh, note how uh, the W flag actually uh, overwrites the file completely. If we were to use A, for example, I'm pretty sure it is A, although A plus does exist, but I don't remember what the difference is, um, we would be adding it onto the end. So as you can see, we're just adding it onto the end of the previous file. Um, so if you want to append to a file, you would use A. Uh, if you want to write to a file and overwrite the data in it, you would use W. And then again, you see here, it's um, it's overwritten the file. If you have multiple lines, so if we do uh, this and then close this off and then come to a new line, go down here, and that's not get rid of that. And then do a terminal, it's a terminal, a, a closing bracket. I don't know where I got the word terminal from there. And we call out lines instead. <clears throat> So if we do this uh, with the right, we'll get an error because of course it must be a string or tuple. However, there is also right lines and I can't actually remember if you need to, uh, okay, you do need to specify the uh, the new line character in there as well. But essentially you use right lines if you want to, um, essentially write line by line a, a list of strings. So if you have a huge list of strings, then right lines are probably better for you. Uh, but you probably need to put like a, a new line character on the end. Of course, you could do something like um, lines dot split. No, actually, wouldn't be dot split. It'd be well, it'd be um, like list comprehension. So it'd be a format string uh, L and then new line for L in lines, and then you could you could do that if you wanted. Oh, actually, you couldn't. Oh, because actually, it would still need to be right lines, wouldn't it? Yeah. And this will give you all your extra uh, new lines and stuff. Um, but yeah, that is pretty much the basics of opening and closing files. Uh, there is a better way of doing that. Um, and that is with the use of context managers, which I'm going to be talking about in the next video. Um, so stay tuned for that if you want to hear about that. But if you have any comments about, um, or if you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, then leave them down in the comments below, or you can join the Discord server using the link in the description. I have all my socials down there as well, so feel free to check those out. Uh, but if you liked the video, say hello down below. If you really liked it, then consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss out future uploads. And if you really, really liked it, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Of course, you don't have to be a really cool thing if you did too. Then in mind, I'd like to thank my awesome Patreon for being awesome. And I'll see you next time where we talk about file IO with context managers, i.e. the superior way of doing it. Um, so I'll see you for that.